Hello hackers! Welcome back to Advanced Exploitation, the um, second putting it all together module of Pwn College. Today we're going to be talking about data disclosure via race conditions um, on the heap specifically. Um, as a reminder, we have our example uh, service here from the previous video. The service has a lot of um, security checks, but these security checks while they are good in a single threaded scenario are bad in a multi-threaded scenario. So we're going to um, kind of take the first step toward exploitation. Um, here, there's also a trivial buffer overflow here in this fscanf onto the input variable on the stack. Um, but we can't exploit that, of course, because we don't know the canary or any addresses. Um, all right, so let's dive in. Um, we have a lot of, uh, this is a multi-threading service, right? We can connect to it um, and each connection gets its own thread to run through that loop that we just saw. Um, of course, as you know from the race condition module with uh, multiple threads going on at the same time, crazy stuff can happen. Um, what the takeaway is, is all of the this code rep that, that is in the original program can really run in any order because you can get enough threads in there doing a lot of different stuff that execution ordering between threads gets interleaved and they all act on global data. And so when one thread modifies global data, that effect is seen in the other thread as well. So by interleaving in a clever way with enough threads, actions um, uh, in this program, you can basically run any of this stuff in more or less any order with the, the global data being acted upon, right? Um, and there are a couple of things here. One is um, we can uh, have one thread uh, set the stored or unstored condition of any um, of the uh, messages, of the global messages, while another thread is printing them out or another thread is allocating or we can have a, a print trigger um, after a free before an allocation, even though in the normal code it's guarded because we can trigger these uh, stored indexes yes and stored indexes no in other threads we can basically bypass these guards with race conditions, right? The core concept here is that you can have security checks that make sense in a single threaded scenario. And if you don't specifically think about every attack scenario, if you don't specifically think about the multi-threaded case and your library or your program ends up being used in a multi-threaded way, those checks can be insufficient. All right, let's take a look at you know, specifics, I know this is a little uh, high level, but let's take a look at a specific way in which this can break down um, from the perspective of uh, accomplishing some actual step toward exploitation of this program, right? So we're close, right? As in, in baby heap, you had the same sort of uh, primitives. You had malloc, scanf, free, uh, instead of printf, you had puts. Uh, it's, it's the same thing, honestly. Um, uh, and uh, all of these tools, um, you used all these tools to achieve exploitation, right, in baby heap. But here, we don't know where anything is, right? Um, like a scenario that you face in baby heap. We don't know where the pi base is. We don't know where the um, ASLR base is for all the library addresses and stuff. We don't know where the stack is, the heap base, the canary, right? If we knew the canary, and let's say the libc base, we could wrap, or the pi base, we could wrap, as you know from baby wrap. But we don't know the canary. We don't know any of those bases. So, of course, from baby heap, as you know, you can use these primitives to start dis um, disclosing addresses, right? So, for example, you could use um, tcache um, to. Uh, uh, by using these race conditions and the ability to interleave different instructions all at the same time, you can accomplish basically what you did with baby heap in terms of triggering a free of a message and then triggering a print of that message, right? And that is a viable path forward. 
Um, there's one complication. Uh, things aren't as simple as you might expect. So in BabyHeap, we looked at heap uh, operations in a single threaded program. A single threaded program has one main thread. And it turns out that PT malloc, which stands for pthread malloc, actually has a lot of thread specific concepts that it uh, employs. One of these concepts is arenas. Um, going off of the idea that uh, different threads tend to do different things, tend to share um, fewer resources between threads than they do within that thread and so forth, PT Malik had uh, the bright idea to give every thread kind of its own heap. So the heap is actually split into arenas. Each arena lives in a section of memory, accessible to all the threads in the process, of course. Um, but each arena holds, uh, has a space for its um, chunks that that arena will allocate um, and uh, pointers back to other arenas in case that arena runs out of space and so forth, right? Um, each thread ends up with at least one ar arena to allocate from. I think uh, actually there's some crazy algorithm by which uh, a thread might end up with eight arenas, up to eight arenas or some amount of arenas. But basically um, the takeaway is that the addresses that you receive from malloc within a thread are different, within a, a non-main thread, are different than the addresses you receive from malloc within the main thread. Um, this means that, uh, one, the leaks will be pointers to the threads arena instead of the, uh, this is this should be one probably. Let me just fix that in the slide, one sec. All right, now we have the takeaways in the proper order. So the first takeaway is the leaks that you might get out of a heap uh, misuse, the, the tcache forward pointer leak is going to be a pointer to the threads arena. And the takeaway too is early chunks in those threads or a pointer, sorry, to a chunk in the threads arena to somewhere inside it. And then two early chunks in those threads will have nulls um, in the addresses. Let's take a look at why this is. Um, to explore that specific concept, I created arena.c. We have uh, basically a, a very simple multi-threaded program that spins up a bunch of threads and um, just does one malloc and the same size malloc as in our, our example program. So um, let's compile this. Here we go. Let's run it. And actually, let me uh, just realize it would be good to also do this in the main arena. So we have the main thread. This looks like a heap address that you're used to, right, from baby heap. And then here are a bunch of different weird uh, addresses that you don't expect from malloc. And you can see they all end in this B60. Um, so obviously there is some, if we modify this to have two mallocs of 16, and let's, uh, yeah, they're, they're going to get interleaved, of course, but here we see it. From, it goes from hex 60 to hex 80, which, of course, is the size of the chunk that has an alloca usable allocation space of 16 bytes, right? There's the extra hex 10 for um, uh, meta, uh, for the chunk metadata. Um, but basically, these are all at very similar low addresses in different uh, high address uh, allocation areas. Basically, when the thread starts up, libc allocates an arena for it to um, service uh, malloc requests. And, uh, um, so basically, this is a thread specific, well, not quite thread specific, but a 
piece of the heap created specifically for the thread, of course, it is valid outside of the thread. Um, and if you can actually see it being created, if you do S trace dash F, um, for example, let's grab one of these, this guy, it's one of the heap addresses and let's see where that came from. There. So this is the memprotect setting up that heap. Here's the uh, on map. Here's the on map. Sorry, this is a. Let's grab more. Oh, an extra byte. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that should be enough to avoid confusion. I think we're seeing way too many. Uh, it, it, um, this is what happens when you go off, um, script. I think it gets allocated elsewhere. Or rather by, by something else implicitly possibly. Uh, nope, these are all, ah, here, here is, okay, here we go. We have this address, let's say 7F932C0. And then somewhere here, we're going to be allocating boom, 7F932C0, blah, blah, blah. This is from PID ending in seven, that's this guy. Um, so at some point after creation, it actually, Lipsy will allocate a heap for this, uh, for this, or an arena for this thread when it first goes to use the heap. Um, all right, oops. That was a uh, roundabout way of saying that um, threads have uh, 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 allocated addresses by a thread will often, but not always, it really depends on the state of the, the, uh, uh, the heap cache and everything, often have uh, end up with addresses that are um, kind of thread specific. Now, of course, keep in mind, so this, first of all, gives us a new thing that we need to know, this thread specific arenas. Um, but keep in mind, this isn't removed, like independently existing somewhere in memory. This is memory mapped. Memory mapped at, um, an address that is decided by uh, uh, the Linux kernel, to, at least to some extent. I, I think at the very least, they're very relative to each other. I think if you leak one, you know the rest, but um, we'll see how to go from leaking one to knowing much more of the memory space. All right, anyway, so we have thread specific arenas that we have to leak on top of everything. So let's dive in. Um, or that we can leak on top of everything. So now our uh, information disclosure that we talked about with this, you know, tcache pointer leak uh, to carry out in this race, uh, uh, this program that has concurrency errors uh, will at first give us a thread specific arena address. So how do we do it? All right. We have two routes. First, we can use race conditions to, uh, or, or, or just intelligent use of those uh, message allocations to make enough allocations to create an address that doesn't have null bytes in it, right? Um, so if we allocate enough um, uh, messages, then eventually that single null byte that we were seeing in the uh, address uh, of the, um, the, the return of Malik 
uh, will go away. It'll become a one initially, and then you know, I'll obviously keep climbing as more and more is allocated, and then uh, we'll be able to leave this. We can take that route. We can also take a different route that's very interesting. Um, we can utilize the same race condition in a slightly different context to confuse a different part of the code that's not even in the program, that's in the libraries. So consider how printf is uh, implemented. In, the, in our code, we have this, um, in the printf functionality, you have f printf, message colon percent s of this stored index right how is printf implemented how would you implement it right you need to write to a, some file descriptor a string but that string isn't known ahead of time right or the length of the string more specifically isn't known ahead of time and you need to pass the length to write in that and then printf will call write so it first needs to figure out the, the length of the string and then it does the write and you notice something in our uh, kind of straw man example, we didn't lock the memory that uh, the string is occupying. There is no way to just lock memory like that anyways, right? We would need a mutex. Everyone that uses that uh, string would have to uh, agree that before they touch the string, they lock the mutex and then printf would lock the mutex, do the length, do the right, unlock the mutex. This is non non viable, right? Because uh, just developers won't do that. You never think about, oh, I should lock this mutex when I do printf and so forth. So, realistically speaking, this is printf, and we can race printf. So imagine this: you use the malloc action to allocate memory, then you use the scanf action to fill it with some large amount of memory of, of, of printable, like a not null uh, data. Then when you go to print it out, printf will take its length. And then of course, this is where you hope to win the race. You win the race by having the other thread uh, get scheduled between the sterlen and the right and then fill that, um, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, oh, sorry. And then free that allocation. Of course, then libc will, uh, or pthread will write in the pthread metadata when it frees the allocation. And your write will actually write out the pthread metadata of that length. Pretty crazy, right? But it actually works. Um, in fact, this is not a hard race to win because write is a system call. And this thread will basically pause to jump into the, the kernel. The kernel will do some checks, might go execute something else, depending on, on the scheduling policy and what else has been going on. In the meantime, this other thread is running on a different core and uh, freeze that, that, that um, allocation. And there are no mutexes anywhere. You know, the mutexes are something that you have to do explicitly. Let's take a look at how to exploit this. This is our, our first kind of a crack uh, in the veneer of this program. Oh, no. I switched to the wrong thing. Okay, here's that slide that I was just talking about um, that was tiny on the top right. All right, cool. Um, let's dive onwards. So... Here is uh, our terminal. Um, I created the program um, as this alt. So alt is now running. I can connect to localhost 1337. And here it is, malloc scanf printf. I can malloc uh, allocation one, scanf allocation one, say hello, printf allocation one and it says hello all right so just just um so that we remember our heap trickery i can uh connect um let's just restart this whole thing all right connect up uh i can say malloc in allocation zero malloc in allocation one malloc in allocation two 
Of course, I can free allocation zero, free allocation one, free allocation two. And now I should be able to, if I print F, or sorry, if I then malloc, I don't know, whatever the last thing that was freed. So allocation three is now going to be that pointer going to be put into allocation allocation. The pointer that was in allocation three is going to be returned again by T cache to allocation two. Um, if I do print F here, it's probably not printable. Uh, so let's do this. Let's quit. So it did give me message colon, and then three A. No, three A is the colon. Ah, here we go. Nope, space zero. Ah, yeah, here we go. Three zero one three. That is the last two bytes. I wonder why it needed. Let's just do. This again. Mm. Let me uh, copy that, including a bunch of new lines so that Netcat realizes it's. Okay, there we go. All right, here we go. When we say it says message colon space 3013 new line, right? If we have one fewer allocation it'll be a different last bytes but that null byte as we talked about is screwing us up still three zero one three why why three zero one three oh oops my bad. That should be printf3. All right. Where's my message? There's there's some um, buffering problem for sure. Let's do this in Python. Okay, we're gonna do malloc zero, malloc one, free zero, free one, malloc three, printf three, quit. And then we're going to print everything. All right, there we go. Message is hex 30, hex 13. If we do an additional allocation instead, let's say on a new connection. So first of all, on a new connection, still hex 30, hex 13. If we do an additional allocation, malloc two and then free two still hex 30 hex 13 there should be a different tcash address malloc zero malloc one malloc two this is what happens when we go off. Uh...
All right, I need to uh, figure out what is going on rather than keeping you waiting. I'll be right back. I'm back. Okay, I figured out what was going on. Oh, man. So, um, the messages and all of this, they're stored globally. So when I was reconnecting, I was starting off with a state of that message uh, buffer that, that was not what I was expecting. Here is um, the source code of that alt. Oops. This was not null, like I was expecting it on a new connection. Keep in mind with these long running threading services, the internal state might uh, persist. This is a good thing and a bad thing. It's a good thing because as an attacker, you can leak parts of it, set things up, uh, and then you know actually do step-by-step -step exploitation. As a bad thing, as an attacker, it's because you uh, can forget and get mixed up. All right, so to fix that, I'm now launching it in my Pwn Tool script. When you do this for a service that listens on a network, make sure to clean it up afterwards. Um, you can do this, or you can have Pwn Tools do it for you using a um, context. So no matter what happens, it'll now always clean up that uh, process. All right, so we run that process, we connect to it, and then we do two allocations, two freeze, and then we do an allocation and print it out. That is the last two bytes, hex 20, hex OF um, of the Tcash forward pointer. Of course, we can do free, uh, another malloc and free. And now these are the, for the last two bytes, hex 30 and hex uh, 13. If you subtract this, it should be somewhere around hex 400 because we're allocating 1024 bytes per allocation, all right, hex 410, including the uh, metadata. All right, so as a reminder, we were going to do this race. So let's do this race. So we're going to allocate, uh, write data into it and deallocate in one thread in a loop. And in another thread, we'll just print out that allocation. Eventually this will happen. We'll put the data, we'll trigger the printf our, the race will happen so that the length is calculated, but by the time the write happens, that allocation has been freed and that uh, location has been replaced by, um, what's it called, by a, 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 a tcache metadata. All right, so we launch it. We're going to use our of course, you can use multiprocessing properly. We're not going to do that. We're going to make two connections. Uh, and in one connection, you're going to we're going to fork the, the interpreter if um, the result of the fork is the child. We're going to, um, in a loop, and of course this will be messy and well, I'll, I'll just do it more properly. Say 1000 times, we're going to send the line, uh, scan F or sorry, malloc zero, scan F zero, how much do we want um, to, um, let's say we want the, the, the two uh, keywords, the next pointer and the P thread uh, struct pointer, A, 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 B, 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 B. And then we want to print that zero. No, sorry. And then we want to free zero. In another thread, we're going to print F it all the time. And the print F will hopefully start running right here, but, uh, no, sorry, scan F, we want print F here, then we want the free in another thread. I actually don't think it matters because of the way the race happens, um, but this is what we're going to do. And then in the, and then we'll remember to clean up. Okay, wait, I should get TID, right? 
No, I think get pid will. Oh, no, 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 this is forking. Okay, and then in the parent, we will, uh, well, this is the parent, so. In the parent, we will instead sit there and in the other thread, put printf or uh, free zero. All right. And then um, we are going to see what comes out from these prints. Boom. All right, so you can see we have a bunch of A, B, 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 B. We also have a bunch of nuns where it looks like we, uh, what happened was that the free happened between the scanf and the printf. Um, actually, I think we'll have better luck if you do free zero here and scanf, or sorry, printf zero here. Okay. Uh, I think it crashed. Oh. What is going on? Why isn't it printing anything? Okay. Oh, it was printing. <laughs> this is all we got. Okay, okay. Cool. So now we're reading, we need to read off of this second thread. So we're doing malloc, scanf free, and then we're doing printf. We're hoping to hit the printf right here so it, it runs, uh, or right during the free, so that it first uh calculates the string then the free happens and then um it prints it out so here it is again we didn't win the race there this might just be not be enough and we can actually print this out easier if we do uh, split into lines and then just compute the set of unique ones and here it is so here is all of the things that we got, we had message A, that's a weird one. So probably or possibly what's happening here is during the Sterlen, the, uh, no, that I, yeah, this, this I, I don't have a good explanation for it here. We have a message, uh, a, 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 the exact thing we're looking for, which is we have, we did the Sterlen of 16 bytes and then we wrote out 16 bytes. And then of course the, the first bytes are, uh, the first keyword is null because that's the first allocation that are three. There was nothing in tcache beforehand. And then the next one is a pointer to uh, somewhere inside the tcache arena. The tcache per thread struct lives in that tcache arena. Um, does it? No, this should be in the thread local storage of the process. Um, we have uh, other garbage, another thing with a slightly different, it looks like, uh, pointer, DCS7F. Oh, yeah, this only printed 15 instead of 16 bytes for some reason, but we have our leak. Um, so I would say, let's, let's do, this matches closer to the slides. If we do max scan printf, let me do the free and the other one. Why is, oh, and then we read R1. Oh, but that doesn't work. So I should actually adapt, adjust the slides because this is the way to do it. Malik scan free in a loop, doing stuff that, that makes sense. Um, and then the printf, we hope to get running right between there. Boom. All right, so now we have leaked out this TK, uh, 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 struct, uh, a pointer somewhere in memory to the tcache per thread struct of that thread, right? This is huge um, and very exciting. I actually do think that this is allocated on the, uh, in the memory space of that uh, arena, by the way. 
uh, oops. Um, and now we have a thread specific arena address. Very awesome. So uh, moving on, we'll talk about what we'll do with that address. Now that we know where something in memory is, of course, now we can start overlapping allocations and all sorts of good stuff uh, because we know where to overlap them into. Stay tuned.